Hey y'all, my name is Millennial Smark and I'm back at it again with another video. Timestamps are down in the description box below if you want to go directly into the review. Otherwise, bear with me. Ricochet is crashing out again. But this time, my boy is really crashing out apparently when you listen to how people are talking about what he said on Twitter. Now, apparently this happened yesterday, so this is unbeknownst to me. I just made a video on Ricochet uh, getting upset. Well, not necessarily getting upset, but highlighting how he is like just getting angry at like the most basic of basic trolls and it's just unbelievable to me considering the guys of, i mean i would presume if not a millionaire super close to it and has like everything that life could give you at an advantage to be completely happy and secure he needs people to like him look, look check this out this, this is the tweet that he actually put out yesterday it's really funny to me how a lot of people used to love me under the tutelage of WWE, but the moment I jumped ship to another company, they turned their backs on me. Like, why? I don't get it. I'm still the same fucking person I was in and outside of WWE. Who the fuck are you? This app is so filled with the most brain rotted dumbasses, WWE shills, as what he calls them, that I'm seriously considering leaving this fucking shit app. Like the, to the like the toxicity can't be good for any of you, especially to those who constantly harass my wife. Now that's bullshit if they're doing that. But continuing on. So, anyways, for the Cretans who randomly started opposing me, hell, even the people that supported me all throughout, no matter what, go fuck yourselves. I don't trust any of you. Oh boy, he's actually crashing out for real. Oh my god. Like God forbid <clears throat> I want to expand I want to expand my horizons and try other things. Yeah, I really shouldn't care about others' opinions, but like this shit tilts me in a way that I can't describe. It's like some Joker bullshit. I used to wrestle to be honest independent scene before i signed a blood deal with vince jesus christ i was universally beloved before and after i signed so what changed aew you can say aew was a stain on the industry all you want but this is the company that has actually accepted me as i am a professional wrestler and the best at that you used to fucking simp for this woman on a regular basis but now that she wants to do her own thing, she's this big evil woman. When the most evil of men constantly sexualize her on here and on Instagram. And then he says, and before, and I quote, she constantly thirst traps, end quote. Fuck off, left my ass off. You fall for them. <clears throat> okay, so there's a bunch of things that we have to uh we have to digest after reading that because he is he is he's 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 crashing out. My boy, he just can't take it anymore. So I understand where he's coming from in regards to people harassing his wife. Like I said, I've been in that position already. Now, granted, with Ricochet, it's a little bit different because with me, I mean, people blatantly lied about what the fuck I went through. But with Ricochet, it's a little bit different because people are literally judging you. But the thing is, Ricochet, they're only coming at you. And I had to learn this the hard way, bro. This is true. They only come at you because you keep feeding them. You can't keep giving them the bait. If they notice that you're angry, they're going to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Don't take the bait. If you guys notice, I'm pretty sure most of you notice. I don't really reply to as many comments as I used to. That's by design. To be honest with you, I legitimately like sometimes like back in the days when I started to like reply a little bit less, I would see the comments. I just wouldn't feel like replying honestly it's just because i'm actually legitimately more busy and i just don't have time to read comments i actually legitimately don't look at the comments as much as i used to anymore i do sometimes still but not nowhere near as close as i used to and it's honestly that much better for your health bro
Like, you don't need to read comments from people who are just going to criticize you when in reality, they're hypocritically going to be in that same position watching you at the same time, right? But to go a little bit further than that, my God, not everybody has to support you. You know, like, I've never expected people to support me who hate me. I understand that, right? But you, it's like, you, you really think that you're the best at what you do. I don't think I'm the best. I'm nowhere near the best at this. Not even remotely fucking close. You actually think that you're the best. So you expect people to like you because you think you're the best. Again, with Ricochet, it's more so a narcissistic twist that's aligning with how he's actually believing and thinking about himself that he just can't come to grips with, that no one appreciates him like he appreciates himself. You know what I mean? Like you come out here and you say these things like I'm the best in the world or I used to be on this side and people love me when I was really, really great. Probably all true. Tribalism is a thing. I know it fucking sucks, but that's just more of a reason not to give these people attention. But more importantly, my guy, you are not the best. You you are not. You are very, very shit in a lot of criteria. Whether you work for AEW or whether you work for WWE, I'm pretty sure you've been hearing the criticism of you sucking on the microphone, having no character, even when you were in WWE. That that criticism didn't just stop because or didn't just start because you went to AEW. Don't play that fucking game, boy. Don't do that. Like in the end of the day, that's where the criticisms are stemming from. And then you feed them and then you bait them because you're insanely insecure. And then they come back and do the same thing over and over again. They get a rise out of you. Really? Yeah. Just get off of Twitter. Honestly, get off of social media in general. Like, just stop. If you really are this narcissistic, if you really are this conceited, honestly, to a degree, you might even be super fucking vain. Then what the fuck is it? Like, what the fuck do you want people to do? Like, you're that you have that much of a big head. And at the same time, people are criticizing you. Those are that's like oil and water, bro. Those things are not going to mix together. Now, if people are actually going out to Samantha Irving. I mean, I can say stop, but that's not going to do anything. We all know those are pieces of human fucking garbage. But at the same time, if they are going after her and by going after her, you mean they're lusting over her. Again, she's posting thirst traps. You can quote and you can make fun of that with the whole little capital letters, lowercase letter bullshit that people typically do in order to make fun of people. But that's what she's doing. That's the risk that you take when you actually post photos on the Internet like that. What the fuck are you expecting? That's like leaving a $10 bill on the floor and then someone picks it up and you're like, why are you stealing that $10 bill? What the fuck were you expecting? What the fuck were you expecting? Like, yeah, bro, just just jump off of social media, man. It's that's probably the best bet for you. Get the fuck off of social media first. Get the fuck over yourself, but then j jump off of social media. Get the fuck off of social media, too. But my guy crashing out like this, it ain't it. Hopefully, whatever you do tonight, you don't let me jump into that pile and add on more to those criticisms. Because boy, oh boy, you fuck up tonight. You're going to hate me just as much as you hate everybody else. Only difference is I ain't going to be trolling. I'd rather just tell you the truth. With that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's go over some of this, okay? Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to just completely generalize and I'm not going to, you know, over exaggerate. I'm going to tell you how I exactly think about this. This tag team match was, was it was it went on way too long, man. It's you guys. It's 820. As of this recording, it is 820. This match went on and it took up 20 minutes of the show, but it's not going to contribute anything else to the show at all. There's no angle coming out of this. There's no story coming out of this. They're not going to come back and touch on this later on tonight. This was it. And it opened up the show and it took up damn near 20 minutes of the entire first hour. And it's not going to contribute anything to the show at all. Besides the fact that they just had a match. This shit could have went on for about five minutes, got to the same conclusion. And we could have got some more stories over. We could have got some more people over that time dedicated to that match could have been spread throughout the night. And they could have been shown again later on that night promoting their match. Who in the fuck cares about, I mean, and mind you, and mind you, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. So the match in itself is not contributing to the show, right? The crowd was dead as fuck for this match, right? Who was this benefiting? 
I'm not understanding. Who was this benefiting? Was it just for the sake of getting them on television? Well, what the fuck is the point of getting them on television when they're not necessarily going to do anything with that television time? I don't get it. I hate that kind of thought process. It's so lame. And look at this card, by the way. Look at this card, bruh, the, the, for, for Full Gear. We have MJF going up against either Roderick Strong or Adam Cole. You have Jay White and Hangman Adam Page, right? You have this Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match with people who aren't even announced for the match yet, which, by the way, that's going to be the main event to see who's going to qualify for the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Championship match. That's probably going to either curtain jerk or be second from the last on the fucking card. That's going to be the main event for tonight. Give me a fucking break. Mercedes Monet and Chris Statlander, Swerve Strickland and Bobby Lashley, which most likely is the only match that I necessarily care about, but even then, with that match right there, they're not putting enough heat behind the Hurt Syndicate. Hopefully that changes later on tonight. Jack Perry versus Daniel Garcia, and the main event is John Moxley and Orange fucking Cassidy. That you already know the conclusion to. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, if... Look, I don't care about a show being predictable. I don't care about a match going too long or whatever the case may be. As, as long as there's structure and there's reasoning, rather than just having the match for the sake of having the match, I'm all good with it. But they just do these matches and run through the fucking card, and it doesn't have any impact on the pay-per-view. It doesn't have any impact on the show in itself. You're not going to remember it as soon as the show is over with, unless someone brings it up and it somehow pops up in your mind. Give it about a month. Give it, hell, even two weeks. Give it a week. And it's gone to com give it a couple of days. And it's gone completely out of your fucking mind, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then the shit that they attempt to try to do to at least make it somewhat captivating, it's fucking dumb, bro. Like, they had this angle with Mercedes Monet backstage, right? They ran through the card, and in the middle of the card, they were like, let's cut backstage and see what happened with Mercedes. I'm going to assume it was earlier that night where, again, they're doing this whole dissension thing with with mercedes monet and camille and it's like i'm not look i know the starting point as to when it happened but it just feels so goddamn forced there was no promo to kind of lean into it there was no story cultivated they, they at least did that for mjf and warlow remember back in 2019 they at least had a promo backstage had some kind of creative to kind of give you that inkling rather than just rushing directly into it like they did mercedes and chris statlander i still don't know the reasoning as to why chris statlander has a is or not chris statlander excuse me camille is following behind mercedes monet i mean it's clear that they're going to do the cliche tripe of I owe you everything for getting me into the company to make money for my dead parents. Some bullshit like that. They always do shit like that, bro. But in the end, while they're doing all that, Chris Statlander is overhearing all the stuff that Mercedes is saying to Renee Patty Cake. And she attacks her and they start to brawl. Eventually, Camille tries to help out, but she's deterred. And then sooner or later, they all go through some ply while after Chris Statlander gives one of the weakest spears of all time to Mercedes and all of them go tumbling through the wall. It's so stupid and it's so goofy. And... I will say that I at least, I, I like the attempt, but it was just cornballish, man. It was just cornballish. And knowing that this main event is going to be the way that it's going to be in this given show, man, I'm just, I'm not feeling it so far. But we still got another, what, one hour and 35 minutes. So hopefully they can, I don't know, turn the tide, I guess. I see Will Ospreay in the ring. So let's see what he has to say. All right, while we have Lance Archer and Roger Strong beating the shit out of each other right now on commercial break, <clears throat> let me take the time and um, give a little bit more charitability in regards to this promo right here with uh, Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher. Now, I'll give credit where credit is due. That was a good promo. That was a solid promo. That's what you're supposed to do in order to help give people reason to want to pay money, $50, to want to watch your match. And that's just saying on television or on YouTube or something. God forbid if you paid a ticket to this fucking show. But that's what you're supposed to do. And I thought in regards to the aggression and the in regards to the actual points being made. Now, granted, a little bit too much flattery for Will Ospreay. I mean, I swear to God, that guy had his head so far up his own ass. Let me be the one to give him a buy one, get one free special so he can get another fucking head. But outside of that, though, outside of the actual points being made, you know, again, too, too much exaggeration. They still had a solid promo. They still had a great, solid promo. So you had Will Ospreay come out, obviously. Uh, he's calling out Kyle Fletcher. Let's get this over with. Kyle Fletcher comes out to the ring. Before he even gets in the ring, Will Ospreay 
He makes it known, hey, I was a part of the Don Callis regime. I know how those meetings go. How about you be a man? I know you got something in your back pocket. Let's get rid of it. Meet me. One on one. Man to man. I'm not going to put a finger on you. Kyle Fletcher took out a screwdriver, threw it out in the middle of the ring. Will Ospreay picked it up. And I don't know how the hell he did this. He threw the screwdriver on the outside of the ring and like, I mean, without even looking, just threw it outside the ring and it landed perfectly on the point of the screwdriver. That was actually pretty fucking cool. But nevertheless, though, he went back and forth with Kyle Fletcher, right? Making some solid points, you know, like, hey, uh, you wanted to do this. You wanted to do this. Give me a reason as to why you did it. And then Kyle Fletcher gave his reason as to why he did it. He always felt like Will Losbury was holding him back, giving him just enough to meet his standards, but never enough to go above Will Losbury. He called him a hypocrite, all this kind of stuff, right? Will Losbury was like, you know what? This is all this is about, right? This is all because afterwards, Kyle Fletcher challenged him to a match at full gear. And he said, this is this is all that this was about. You didn't give a crap about me. All you cared about in the end of the day was getting on my level. You want my clout, essentially, is what he was saying. And I like the point that he was making about his left hand after taking the Tiger driver because he kept bringing up his son, which is his stepson. But nevertheless, a son is a son. He kept bringing him up throughout the promo. And he was making note of the fact that, hey, when he held my hand for those five minutes while I watched your dumbass shave off your hair, I didn't even know he was holding my hand because that tiger driver you gave me, I lost all feeling inside it. And that was a great point right there. I actually very much enjoyed him talking about that because in the end of the day, I mean, Kyle Fletcher did injure you, right? That's why you were going for these past couple of weeks. And I like that little, that little note, that little nugget of you touching on the fact that your son, he, he's touching you and you, you can't even feel it. It's now super duper personal. Again, that was awesome. I dug all of that, right? But nevertheless, though, he did get to a point, right? When he started talking about dangling the carrot in front of his face, like he really was putting himself over. I mean, this was some Bret Hart mark levels, but I mean, Look, all the stuff that Kyle Fletcher was going down and all the credentials he was naming, I didn't hear anything that was anything worth credible outside of what New Japan Pro Wrestling and indie fans care about. I didn't hear anything substantial done in AEW. I haven't heard anything substantial done in WWE. I was a junior cup winner. I won the junior heavyweight title. I won this. I won that. All these New Japan titles. I don't give a fuck about that, bro. That shit ain't that shit ain't relevant to me. They're talking about this guy legitimately like he is really building himself up like he's some Shawn Michaels Bret Hart motherfucker. And it's like, bro, you're, you're not, though, bro. You, you really aren't that guy. You have no clout. Like, really, you are not that big of a deal outside. Now, you're a great talent. I will give you that. And like I said, I underestimate his promo abilities because he's actually pretty damn good on the microphone and he's charismatic. And honestly, if under the right regime and the right era, I could see Will Ospreay making it to superstar levels. He does have the tools, but let's not pretend you are that guy right now. You are absolutely not that guy right now. <laughs> you're not. You're absolutely not. But nevertheless, though, he built himself up as such. And afterwards, you had um, uh, Will Ospreay accept the challenge, the full gear, obviously, right? And then you had uh, Kyle Fletcher and the rest of the Don Kyle's family come into the ring, intimidating Kyle, uh, um, um, Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay said that he had some friends also. You know, he brought out Will Hobbs and uh, Mark Davis. And um, I kind of like this a little bit, too. When they started to brawl, I got to a point when Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis backed into each other. And then he turned around and they didn't want to touch each other before uh, in came Will Ospreay kicking Kyle Fletcher in the face. And Mark Davis is looking at him like, come on, bro. Like, did we really have to do all that? We didn't. And and then they started to brawl. Eventually, that's when Roger Strong came out. And now we're leading into the, the fucking Falls Count Anywhere match bullshit, which Roger Strong just won already. So let me see what he's saying right now so I can just add this onto this and keep it all moving. Okay, so really, he didn't say anything. I was watching this match the entire time while talking to you guys. Um, nothing of significance happened. As I said, as they were kind of swapping out the segments between Kyle Fletcher and Will Ospreay, they went directly into the match with Roger Strong and uh, Lance Archer. They didn't do anything really. I mean, I mean, if anything, it pissed me off a little bit. But you get you get this shit so many times in professional wrestling that it it all it can do is just make you mad. But it doesn't really make you feel anything past mad, honestly. Maybe I shouldn't even say mad. Maybe I shouldn't say disappointed. Maybe I should say nothing. I just feel nothing. You had fucking Lance Archer hit a choke slam on Roger Strong. 
through a table backstage and just immediately went for a pinfall and then got a kick out. Like he just got to finish hitting a suplex. I mean, I remember the Dudley boys hitting 3D through a table and motherfuckers being laid the fuck out. Now you got people get, taking choke slams through tables and as if they were a regular move, no selling, just going directly into the pinfall and kicking out it too like it was a regular transitional move. Just Wrestling is such a fucking joke nowadays. Roderick Strong did win the match. He jumped off one of the barricades inside the air, audience area. All the members of, you know, the Undisputed Kingdom started to interfere and shit like that. And, you know, Lance Archer ended up choke slamming one of the goofs inside from the the, the, the ring guard area. He choked on him on the floor, but it was obviously some plants, security guard plants there to catch Roger uh, to catch um one of the geeks from legitimately breaking his back thanks to Lance Archer and then obviously Roger Strong came he jumped off the barricade and need him in the face and of course small man beating big man who has momentum being built up presumably because you know he is within the stable right now that you just got finished showing that you want to tell me is imposing but he loses a match against Roger Strong who for some reason has no business being I mean <sighs> Has no business being in this angle. It's just, it's just stupid. All of it is stupid. All, all of it is stupid. But the promo in itself, the promo was fine. I didn't hate it. But everything else afterwards was fucking stupid. And this is fucking stupid. Um, we have Adam Cole right now. And Kanosuke Takeshita. After the match, Roger Strong was going to say some shit. But I didn't catch it because I was talking to you retards. He got attacked from behind by Kanosuke. And then Adam Cole came out to save him. And now they're having a match as we speak. So... We'll take it from there, and then we'll keep it on moving. Okay, let's keep it on moving. Right, because don't make, you know, the main angle for your entire show. Don't make, you know, the match that's going to be the main event. Don't, don't make anything in regards to what I just said right there consequential as far as the show in regards to your reasoning for want to watch it conclude, right? <clears throat> Instead, we're going to get the dick riders. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the deaf riders in the middle of the card they'll be coming up next ladies and gentlemen oh my god bro i just I, I don't get their priorities their priorities are so fucking out of whack speaking of priorities being out of whack so we had this match with, to, with kenosuke to catch and adam cole right whatever the match is whatever right <clears throat> which is what you expect to get in 2024 wrestling here's my thing as far as the booking is considered it was absolute dog shit from a creative perspective I do appreciate what they're doing with Kanosuke, though. I don't hate Kanosuke. I actually like Kanosuke Takeshita, right? I like Goku, okay? I, I actually appreciate him. And I also appreciate the fact that your mid-card champion was able to go over one of your key stars in your company. It makes that belt feel a hell of a lot more prestigious, right? And also, it makes Kanosuke feel more like a threat. I don't mind that all too much. That's fine, right? My thing is, I still don't understand. By the way, did Kanosuke paint his fingernails? Whatever, uh, whatever. Buddy can live his life however he want to live his life. Just, I, that really caught me off guard. But nevertheless, though, <clears throat> let me see if I understand this. So you started off this entire angle with Adam Cole and, M and uh, MJF, right? As far as coming back to it, completely botched. It's a botched angle. The angle, at f at the angle in itself just didn't work to begin with, right? The beginning of the angle last year, didn't work. Adam Cole fucked up his angle. It completely fucked the entire arc up. Then you had Adam Cole turn on MJF. Then MJF went away because he was also injured. Then Adam Cole turned heel on Warlow. All these guys, right? They're, they're all heels now, right? It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. We haven't seen Warlow since. Then MJF comes back as a babyface and attacks Adam Cole. Adam Cole's gone. MJF's a babyface. Eventually, he turns heel. Adam Cole comes back as a babyface. He attacks MJF. This is the whole entire story arc that we're seeing right now, right? You would think that at the very least, with how botched this angle is, that you can at least do the conclusion at the pay-per-view and get this shit over with. Nope. We randomly insert Roderick Strong for some goddamn reason into all this, teasing a triple threat match, and then Adam Cole gets booted out of the match in place of Roderick Strong. It makes no sense. None of this shit makes any sense whatsoever. This is so fucking goofy. This entire angle is goofy as fuck. Just end it, bruh. Just end it. Just end the entire fucking angle. Don't even sit. Because what if what what the implication that I'm getting from the booking is is, is, is this is what I'm getting from this is that you're in you're saying or you're at least suggesting that 
you're going to get Roderick Strong and MJF right now, and we're going to save Adam Cole and MJF later. At least that's the implications that I'm getting from all this. No, no. You want to go this route with Roger Strong? Fine. But this right here, this should be the end. Don't revisit this anymore. They're going to do it. They're going to revisit it again. This whole angle is completely and utterly fucking botched. This shit makes no sense whatsoever. And they want to pretend as if we ourselves are fucking knuckle dragging fucktars and that we can't have brain cells higher than IQ levels. Just so stupid. Hang on the uh, Hurt Syndicates on TV. Let me see what they're going to say. So many angles tonight. So many angles you could touch on. You got the Dick Riders. You got the Hurt Syndicate. All the stuff that you could touch on to make your main event and you decide to make a tag team match your main event. Just make it make sense. Oh, who the hell are they beating the crap out of? Looks like the looks like the Dick Riders are beating the shit out of somebody right now. Huh. All right. I guess we'll see where this angle is going to go. Bobby Lashley was cutting a promo with, with Renee Patty Cake, and they were just pretty much talking shit about Swerve Strickland. We'll talk more about that when we get to Swerve Strickland, his promo later on tonight. Let's concentrate on the dick riders right now and see where they're going with this. Oh, my God. It's Britt Baker versus Penelope Ford. I'm just going to skip this match, okay? Let's talk about this real quick, all right? Because um, all I want to do is make it to Swerve's promo, and then that's it. I'm just going to cut off the show. There's no reason I want to watch any further. Uh, why? 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 This is not me. This is not me saying this. This is what Tony Khan is saying. Tony Khan, he put his most important angles nowhere near the main event. He put them in the middle of the car and, in the, and more towards the open. <clears throat> so essentially, he's telling me, don't watch the rest of the show. OK, I'm going to happily oblige. Why, why? Who am I to not happily oblige someone when in reality, I'm obliging myself? Yes, bro. I absolutely agree. Fuck your show. Speaking of fuck your show. Speaking of fucking with me while fucking with your show, that was my first mistake. Okay, so first off, let me just get this out the way. Jericho had a promo backstage talking about the importance of the World Heavyweight Championship and Ishii, and there you go. That's all you need to know about that. We get to the uh, Dick Riders, right? Like I said, started off with one of the jobbers being beaten up backstage, right? They came out all bloody. Don't know what the fuck happened. Will Yuta and Cesaro are beating the fuck out of them. Eventually, they make their ways to the ring. I guess Neville's visa ran out. And he's back in uh, Europe again, right? We'll see you again, Neville, in about six months when you randomly insert yourself into another feud because for some reason, Tony Khan signed you to a contract, yet he can't sign you to a proper fucking visa. Digress. I digress. I digress. That's probably not even what the situation is. But nevertheless, though, you have John Moxley in the ring, and he does his whole little Bray Wyatt shtick, and he's just saying words that like i i don't even know the definition of what the fuck some of these words are he's just saying them he's just fucking saying them and he's saying more words and more words and he's so deep and he's so oh god man he, he's so deep bro. his his poetry is d it never lets up no it's, it ain't hard to tell oh my god but you know what is hard to tell this fucking promo He's calling out Orange Cassidy, essentially, right? He's saying a bunch of words just to call out Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy, he eventually brings his ass out to the ring, and he talks in the microphone. That was another mistake. Shouldn't have talked on the microphone when you're Orange Cassidy because you fucking suck on it, right? But he did say words also. Not a lot. Essentially, I accept your challenge. And some shit about chess pawn pieces. This was actually the best part of the entire promo. Where, like, he eventually challenged Whirly Yuta to a match, right? Because he's like, in order to get to a king, I have to knock off one of the pawns, right? And then you have Whirly Yuta. You can see him on camera going, I'm not a pawn. I am nobody's pawn. I am nobody's pawn. And then right next to him is Cesaro. And Cesaro just looks at him while he's saying that. He's like, shut up. <laughs> and then he just shuts up. <laughs> That was the best part of the entire fucking promo. Exactly. That's exactly where Willer Yuta deserves to be. In the bitch spot. That reminded me of Ricochet and Drew McIntyre a few years ago. I don't know which one was more disrespectful. Ricochet being told shut up and then him actually shutting up. Or Willer Yuta in the middle going, I'm nobody's pawn. And then Cesaro telling him to shut up. I, I, how much you want to bet Ricochet told him to do that spot too? How much you want to bet backstage Ricochet was like, hey, you should totally do this spot, Willer. Let me cuck you out like I was cucked, okay? Let me be the Sneeko and you can be the destiny like shut the my god nevertheless though uh orange cassidy he brought out his conglomeration group or whatever and uh they all started to brawl for a little bit and then they ran them off into the crowd actually i'm sorry 
I can't even remember what the fuck happened as far as the brawl is considered. Whatever. They eventually go into the crowd, right? Moxley and the rest of his uh, goofballs. And while he's walking, and I'm looking at it, you don't see him immediately, but I'm like, oh, okay, Darby's going to show up right now, right? And lo and behold, Darby does show up in the audience. He jumps off, does a cross bite to most of them, except for Marina Shafir for obvious reasons. They start the fight backstage and everything. Eventually, they do make it into the truck, Moxley and Marina, right? Cesaro, he also makes it to the truck. It looks like they're going to drive off without Will or Yuta before Darby Allen lawn darts himself inside the truck. And for some reason, Cesaro stopped. And then he got out of the car, which made Darby jump out of the bed of the truck. And then they started to brawl. Uh, Cesaro eventually picked up Darby and then he ran with him in like the parking lot area all the way up to like the gate. And like he ran him into the gate with a shoulder thrust. As Darby was falling to the floor, Cesaro caught him and giant swinged him into the gate also and then left them laying and then he went back to the truck to go leave and then conspicuously will you to finally showed up and then he jumped in the bed of the truck because he's a cuck that rhymed bars and then they drove away while orange cassidy is going over there to go help out darby allen and then darby for some reason he's not calling out john moxley i mean i get it in the end of the day you know like cesaro was the one to do the damage to you which i'm assuming now this is their way to get to maybe darby versus cesaro on one of the episodes of dynamite or maybe even full gear <clears throat> but why not call it the Death Riders? Why, why, why specifically Cesaro? I'm not finished with you, Cesaro, like your fucking Braun Strowman circa 2000 and fucking 17. How about you're not finished with the Death Riders, huh? Or as I like to call them, the Dick Riders, the Meat Riders, whatever floats your boat, okay? No one likes them and they fucking suck, okay? Kayfabe in actual real life, okay? You, that's not me. That's the fucking viewership number than the ratings, okay? No one likes it. Not even your fans who used to be there to watch John Moxley when he was fucking relevant. Well, I guess that's kind of an oxymoron because relevant AEW kind of don't go together. But nevertheless, though, I, I, I love how I'm looking at Darby and I'm looking at Orange Cassidy and they're standing next to each other. And again, you got Darby yelling, I'm not finished with you. Right. And I just can't help but think these two guys, Darby and Orange Cassidy. These are the two guys I'm supposed to be taking seriously going up against the dick riders. This is the state of this company that we're fucking with right now. These two guys are the people who we should be taking seriously to go after the world championship against John Moxley, of all people. Guy who's like literally twice their size. This is so stupid. These charisma vacuums in this fucking company. <laughs> And they want me to get invested into this bullshit. And they wonder and they ask why, they're, why their ratings are in the shitter as far as where it's at right now. It's because no one gives a fuck, bro. Your image is stupid. Look at this sloppy ass match with Britt Baker and Penelope before. I'm skipping over this shit. Sloppy ass match. Women ain't fine at all in this, man. Not one motherfucking fit. <sighs> whatever, man. Whatever. Whatever, bro. Just this. This show sucks. This show sucks. Yep. Another terrible episode of Dynamite, but... What do you expect, right? Can we just get to uh, Swerve Strickland? Is it going to be a... Look at this sloppy-ass match, bro. <laughs> this sloppy-ass match, bro. Uh, man, can we just get to the Hurt Syndicate and get this shit out of the way, bro? We got, like... Well, I don't have, like, 30 minutes. Like, as soon as that Hurt Syndicate promo or anything having to do with Swerve goes away, I'm fucking out of here, bro. I'm out of 5,000. Let's get this shit over with, bro. This boring-ass show. So I'm just going to pretend that what we just seen right there is the main event for tonight. I'm going to pretend what we just witnessed right there with the Hurt Business and everything and the mash with Leo Rush and Swerve Strickland. I'm just going to tell myself that that's the main event. Now, in reality, we know that's not the main event because apparently you would rather put a non like what, what would you say? How would you say this? Not even non qualified. I guess that doesn't make any fucking sense. That's not the right words to use. I, I guess you could say. A match that has absolutely no motherfucking consequences attached to it in the main event. <clears throat> and you want me to give a fuck about it. Now, your consequences may be, well, Devonte. it's supposed to have consequences about the main event. We're supposed to see who's going to qualify for the tag team championship belts. And then you tell me that that apparently has more priority over the Hurt Syndicate, right? Over your world championship title picture that no one gives a fuck about right now. Hell, even the whole MJF stuff with Adam Cole. You're going to sit here and tell me that that tag team title match has more importance, more priority over that. 
It's a state of professional wrestling right now. You know, I kind of see what John Moxley is saying, right? I want to take his nothing burger of fucking words and use them for myself, explaining why AEW absolutely sucks and why it has no credibility to professional wrestling nowadays. But I'm only here for another 10 more minutes. So let's just get right to the point, right? So you have the match with Sora Strickland and Leo Rush. As stated before, as stated again, as stated in the future, next week, next month, next year, next millennium. It was a nothing match. It's just a stereotypical professional wrestling match that exists in 2024. Spot after spot after spot after spot. Choreograph after choreograph after choreograph after choreograph. Sequence after sequence after sequence after sequence. Shit that you don't see in no real fight, which is the whole point of professional wrestling, which is a simulated sport or a simulated fight. But again, it's AEW. They have their core fan base, and apparently their core fan base thinks that every goddamn wrestler has to be an acrobatic, Cirque du Soleil, gymnastic routine bullshit. That's every single fucking person, right? And this match is no different. So like I said, nothing burger, right? Who gives a fuck? What matters is what happened after the match. So Sora Strickland won the match. I know, right? The fireworks are exploding out of my fucking head right now. Bobby Lashley and, M and MVP come out, right? Actually, Sword Strickland called them out. They come out, right? And MVP, he's lauding, you know, or lauding. I keep getting that fucking word mixed up. He's applauding, okay? He's congratulating Sword Strickland. He said that, bruh, I wanted you in my stable for a reason. You are the world's dangerous man, but you're not the world's brightest man. You see, you want the world... What, what, what was he calling so i actually think he called him the almighty and actually which is weird i would have thought that would have been a wwe trademark but essentially he's saying you want the almighty in the ring right should we go in there gonna rough him up a little bit should we go teach him a lesson i don't know what the fuck the crowd is chanting right they're chanting some random shit that i don't know what the fuck they're saying but mvp is like before we go in there this will be your first lesson right that numbers matter that the number game always matters and you're gonna learn that the hard way and in the in the midst of saying that Shelton benjamin attacks him from behind right <clears throat> beats the dog shit out of him bobby lashley gets in the ring beats the dog shit well he threw uh Shelton through swerve out the ring and then bobby beat the fuck out of him outside of the ring threw him back in the ring locked in the hurt lock master lock full nelson whatever the fuck you want to call it he passes out then you have prince nana who's trying to get out of the ring and mvp stops him brings him back in the ring makes him watch Bobby Lashley destroying Swerve Strickland, right, with a hurt lock. He passes out. Bobby Lashley grabs a hold of Prince Nana and throws him into the uh, turnbuckle, right, like the like a shoulder thrust through the turnbuckle, whatever. But Prince Nana, because, I mean, fucking, I don't know, Master William, looking at that boy, he got thrown, he, he just oversold the shit out of it. Just, just fucking Jeffrey and all over the goddamn place. But his ass actually got thrown into that turnbuckle and sold that shit. Like Jazz got thrown outside the house by Uncle Phil on French Press of Bel Air. Again, Jeffrey looking head ass boy. But he's unconscious. He's laid out. He's dreaming about Ethiopia and the fried chickens that he will never be able to touch. That's why it's all a dream. Shout out to the homie Jim Cornette. And then afterwards, you have the rest of the hurt syndicate pretty much taunting them right walking out the ring talking shit i like the new theme song from bobby lashley too right we hurt people we hurt people we hurt people we hurt people <laughs> you can say that enough times right i mean goddamn, can you imagine someone walking in and they're hearing that song we hurt people i wonder in the right context would you be able to explain that right i don't know thinking too deep out of this right now i've been watching way too much porn i'm super porn brain right now but i thought that was a pretty decent segment for all intents and purposes the match with uh swerve and you know leo rush you could take that shit and throw it in the ocean put it in an urn first like decriminate crim like i want you to cremate that bitch and throw it in the ocean don't give a fuck about the match right you've seen one aew match you've seen them all but the angle in itself nothing spectacular just forwarding going to the pay-per-view right but i would much rather see that than another stereotypical reverse fucking poison rana match right i liked it hence why i say i'm gonna give I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do them a favor and i'm gonna end it right here i'm gonna do them a favor and i'm gonna put the kibosh i'm gonna conclude their show for them because what they want to do is put out another five-star classic because five-star classics today are three-star classics in 2002 
I still don't understand. Again, you're essentially telling me to turn off your television show. You're essentially telling me why the fuck are you watching this show? You're essentially telling me, Devontae, tune in just for the time. Because I don't even understand the booking. Here's my thing. If you put this in the main event, this is what they used to do, right? As early as a couple of months ago. Wouldn't you put some of the more important segments at the top of the hour? Something with the Hurt Syndicate? Something alluding to the deck to the Death Riders or the Dick Riders, something like that. You put in your opener something garbage. You put in the middle of your car something that had no resolution or no forward progression with the hurt with the fucking with the Dick Riders, and then you put this garbage match in the main event. Literally no forward moving movement whatsoever. This show was so goddamn missable. That's one thing I would say about this show that really irritates the fuck out of me and what I mean about a waste of time when watching AEW. This show had nothing going on inside it. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing consequential. Nothing fun happened. Just the run of the mill. And, and, and I'll, do, I'll do you one even better. Not only was it nothing, it was boring nothing. Like, you know, when you watch WWE, typically, not all the time, but typically, they're pretty boring shows, right? I used to always say, at least with AEW, they get me so pissed off, I get animated, right? With WWE, they just tend to be boring as shit. With AEW, though, this show tonight felt like a WWE show attached to an AEW show. I can't even see myself getting animated. I can't even get myself to the position to even want to get mad, to, to, to yell and scream because they didn't do anything. They, they, dis, they just didn't do anything tonight. Nothing was fun. Nothing was worth sinking your teeth into. Nothing was worth getting upset about. They just, they, they just, they just did their thing <laughs> and nothing happened at all. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You put something garbage in the opener. You put something garbage in the in the main event, and then you do nothing with the middle portion, and then and then you try to fill it all in with just a bunch of fucking five star matches, and you think that's going to be enough to get you over the fucking finish line. I guess maybe for your audience, maybe for your sickos. They, I guess that's why they call you sickos for right. Maybe for you guys, but for me, I, I kind of like to have meat on my bones. I, I kind of like to have a little sizzle on my steak. I know, I know. Call me crazy, right? Call me crazy, but. Have your garbage show. Have your feelings. I'm going to go do something else that's a little bit worth my time. Right? Use my left and my right hand at the same time. I'm so excited I found the new video with this. You know, let me stop. Let me stop, Devontae. Chill. Chill. People, for some reason, they don't understand what you mean. And uh, they will, for some reason, take that and blow it completely out of proportion and call you a pervert. Which you will be absolutely right about. As always, my name is Devontae. And I'll be catching you fine folks later. I can only imagine what the viewership number is going to be like tomorrow. That shit deserves to be in the 400,000s. But we'll see when we get there. Call me Nostradamus if we do get there. And it ends up being 400,000. Deuces and a P. Eyes.